Welcome to this video on water. So let's have a look at the structure of water. So water is made up of one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen covalently bonded together. So here you can see the atom of uh, oxygen is sharing an electron with this atom of hydrogen, which is sharing one back, and the same is true down here. Now, because the oxygen atom has more protons in its nucleus than the hydrogen atoms, the oxygen having eight and each hydrogen atom having only one, we say that the oxygen atom is more electronegative than the oxygen atoms. This means that the electrons are more likely to be found around the oxygen atom than they are to be found around the hydrogen atoms. So you can see here that the electrons are all sort of shown um, around the oxygen, while the, uh, the hydrogen atoms are lacking any electrons around this portion of the atoms. What this means is that the molecule becomes polar. That is, that it has an uneven distribution of charge. With the electrons more likely to be found around the oxygen atom, that means that the oxygen side of the molecule is more likely to be negative in charge, while the electrons being less likely to be found around the hydrogen part of the molecule, this means that the hydrogen portion is more likely to be positively charged. Now, these charges are not ionic in nature. They are not permanent. So we say that they are partial charges, and in fact, they are very, very weak charges. But we say that the oxygen side is partially negative in charge, and the hydrogen side is partially positive in charge. Now, this property of water, this polar property of water, makes it possibly the most important molecule in the whole universe. And it's the reason that scientists, when they're looking for life, look first for water. So why is it important? Well, it means that water can form hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are weak bonds that form between the partially positive portion of one molecule and the partially negative portion of another molecule. So you can see here a partially positive uh, hydrogen uh, part of this water molecule forms a hydrogen bond with a partially negative portion of this water molecule. Now these hydrogen bonds themselves are very, very weak, but since we have hundreds and hundreds of trillions of water molecules in even the smallest bead of water, we have many, many hydrogen bonds. <clears throat> so these bonds in themselves are quite weak, but collectively become quite strong. So this polar nature of water and these formation of hydrogen bonds are important for a number of different reasons in organisms. The first reason is that the water becomes cohesive. So that means the water molecules stick to one another, form hydrogen bonds with one another. The cohesive nature of water means that water forms surface tension. So it forms like a skin across the surface of water. You might have noticed this when you fill a glass of water slightly too full and you anticipate it um, overflowing, but in fact you get a little bulge on the surface of the water. That's because of the cohesive nature of the water holding it um, in the glass. Now, that is only important for a small number of organisms, such as pond skaters, so they can live on the surface of water, but it's actually more important within organisms because it allows water to form continuous columns, such as water that moves through the xylem vessels in a plant or through the phloem vessels in a plant or through uh, the circulatory system in animals. So uh, the water in blood can move in continuous columns. Secondly, we say that water is adhesive. So this polar nature of water with a negative and positive charge doesn't just mean that the water can be attracted to itself. This water will be attracted to any other substance that has either a positive or a negative charge. So the hydrogen region of the molecule of water will be attracted to a negatively charged molecule and the negative oxygen region will be attracted to a positive charge molecule. So adhesion is important in organisms, such as in the xylem vessels of a plant, because it allows the water to move up the xylem vessels. And you can see here, this is actually demonstrating uh, a simple glass rod in a beaker of water. And without any force being applied, either positive or negative, the water starts to track up this little glass tube, this capillary tube. And that's because the water is attracted to the sides of the capillary tube. 
This uh, adhesive nature helps to support the columns of water in a xylem vessel. Next up, we have the thermal properties of water. Now, these hydrogen bonds here mean that water can store quite a lot of energy within its mass. So here you can see we've got a number of different water molecules with lots of hydrogen bonds between them. Now, uh, when we need to change the state of a substance, we need to uh, allow the molecules to start to move past one another and then eventually to break away from one another so that we move from a solid into a liquid into a gas. Now, these hydrogen bonds hold the molecules together, so they prevent that from happening. Now, because of this, we say that water has two thermal properties. We say it says it has a high heat capacity and a large latent heat of vaporization. A high heat capacity means that it can store a lot of energy and it takes a lot of energy to change state. This is important because it prevents temperature changes within organisms. There's a lot of molecules within organisms that need a set temperature in order to function, enzymes being the most uh, obvious example. They have an optimum temperature. Below that temperature, they don't work very quickly. And above that temperature, they can start to denature. So it's important that the temperature within an organism remains constant. These hydrogen bonds here mean that that happens. Since an organism is made mostly of water, uh, any external changes in temperature aren't necessarily also occurring internally inside the organism because of the high heat capacity of the organism. The large latent heat of vaporization means that a lot of energy is required to vaporize the water, that is, turn it from a liquid into a gas. Well, that's particularly important for mammals who sweat, since it means that when the organism does have too much heat energy within itself, it can transfer that heat energy to water on the surface of the organism, such as in sweat, and the energy is then transferred to the water molecule. It is used to break these hydrogen bonds. And so the energy is transferred from the organism to the water when the water evaporates away. Next, we have the metabolic properties of water. Well, we've mentioned in lots of previous topics how water is required for condensation and hydrolysis reactions. So you can see here in the formation of a polymer from monomers, we have two hydroxyl groups reacting together. Uh, water is released and what's left behind is some form of covalent bond. Equally, if we want to break up a polymer into the um, monomers, then we use water in a hydrolysis reaction to uh, input the oxygen and hydrogen atoms into two new hydroxyl groups to form two monomers from the original polymer. Finally, we have the solvent properties of water. So again, because of the polar nature of water with the partial positive and partial negative charges, it means that water is attracted to substances dissolved within it. So in this example here, we've got some kind of ionic compound, which is made up of ionically charged negative and positive particles. And you can see here that the um, hydrogen side of the water molecules are attracted to this uh, negatively charged ion here. And the water side of the, uh, sorry, the oxygen side of the water molecules, the negatively charged portion of the molecules are attracted to this positively charged ion here. Now, the fact that water can dissolve lots and lots of substances in it has given it the name the universal solvent. It can dissolve many things. Now, as well as being useful for transporting things, such as transporting ions, it also allows it to transport um, uh, other useful substances, such as the reactants and products used in reactions, and also the solvents and enzymes used in reactions. So it means that water can be used to transport things around an organism. So again, examples would be in the xylem and phloem of plants and in the circulatory system, tissue fluid and cytoplasm in animals. Here are the key terms from this topic. Pause now if you want to write these down. Lots more free resources available on pxsbiology.com and if you found this video useful then please remember to like, subscribe and share.